Good evening everybody, welcome to this uh, training webinar for Estimator Express. In this uh, training session we are going to be going through some of the new workbooks released recently in the PVCU bonus pack and applying them to a job uh, as would be done for real. So first things I'm going to do is go into my estimates. Now I've already got the bonus pack activated. For those of you that haven't got this activated yet, um, you will have an option appear on your screen when you load up the soft, uh, 2015 software for the first time, um, uh, giving the option to uh, agree to letting our partners Crystal Direct contact you in regards to the windows, doors and conservatories that they can supply. As you can see here, we've got a bit in the news there. Now, with this bonus pack, there is a host of new calculators included that will let you not only specify the uh, size of the window, but also such items as the colouring, what doors and openings are going to be with that window, and also uh, the lintels and cavity closers that uh, can come with it to help you fit the window yourself, so you don't have to just screw them in, it will come with a complete kit. So first thing, I'm going to go into my estimates and I'm going to create a new estimate I'm just going to call this one job name PVC uh, say training I am very original with my naming as you can probably tell job description training there we go I haven't got a plans express drawing to bring in as we're going to be doing this all in estimator now uh, there will be links with Plans Express as well, so you can actually specify the doors and windows within Plans to bring them in. Next, Master Price Book. So I'm going to keep my Master Price Book. All of my uh, windows are already in there, and my doors. And specification, I'm just going to go for an extension specification. Now this is the first training webinar we've done with the new mini specifications. The, the mini specifications, as you can see here, basically say roof tiling, and I can select from a list a specificate well, a mini specification for just for those features. So I can select a plain tile for a new build or plain tile for extension and renovation. Now, whenever you see the difference between new build and extension and renovation, just like the uh, original specifications, it will give you uh, an extended labour time to account for the extra difficulty with working with an extension or renovation and you can say we've got pan tile for new build, pan tile for extension and a average slate there for new build and extension there as well so once again you've got these in the software now we can actually expand upon these and increase the list of mini specifications we've got so we can actually add more slate uh, specs if you wish for the time being I'm just going to go for a pan tile to extension and renovation and I can also do the same for the external brick Work as well, so external wall brickwork. So I can go down this list to where it says extension and renovation and select from here, say a 75p facing brick for extension and renovation. Now, on that list as well, there is reclaimed bricks, so you can go all the way up to say £1.20 reclaimed brick for uh, renovation. There, the next page as standard, you can say we can select the group of workbooks this I'm just going to go for the extension demonstration but I'm also going to search for crystal within the filter so this is going to show me the crystal direct items that I can now add into this work so crystal direct conservatory with gables double edwardian conservatory once again lean to conservatories and then composite doors bifold doors double panel French patio, single, triple, PVC windows and as back down to the rest of the uh, items from the extension demonstration. I'm untick those by four patio doors because I'm not going to need them and I'm going to untick any windows here as well because they're going to be surplus to requirements. Click next, say chart type, small extension, not too worried about this for the moment and then customer address details. So I'm just call this Mr. Rept. 
button address three range and actually that would be enough for now. Confirm my profit markups at 30% so once again if this is your first training webinar I've not seen much about software previously the markups because when you're estimating you'll be working to exact with a little allowance for wastage on top this is where everything where your profit goes on top and also just to push the point as well you know you don't want to cut this down too much because this is where you're paying yourself as well for doing this estimate unless you actually physically include it with the, with the estimate itself this is where you're paying for your own time your van insurance your secretary anything else like that and also inflation rates and the delay for inflating cost now not everyone's going to be needing inflation rates because many people be doing jobs uh, within a certain amount of time uh, smaller jobs may not require it, um, but it's particularly useful for a couple of circumstances, specifically long jobs where the materials you'll be ordering towards the end will possibly have gone up in price since you actually estimated them originally. And also, if you're estimating for jobs towards the end of the year, you can account for inflation uh, in the new year. So you can basically say, I want to make sure there's a price increase that's going to hit around about January so you can provide a, a uh, quote with inflation included so you're not going to lose out on material costs if you're working in say February, March and you're doing the uh, estimate in October, November the previous year. It's one of the things to bear in mind that. Click finish and now it's going to put its items together for us in the estimate. So first things first I'm going to put a couple of walls together um, just for, we got something to attach to and then I'm going to get on to using some of these new windows and conservatories so I'm going to go into the brick and block cavity wall and I'm, for this worksheet I'm going to say this is the main section so main walls I'm not going to go too uh, in depth with this the extension on the side as it's uh, fairly standard fare and I want to get more into the uh, say conservatory side of things so location extension there we go and I'm going to say single story cavity wall select so I've got NAs it looks like I need to bring some materials across accept defaults on those and see what materials are needed ah it's my block work so if you bear me a moment I'm just going to go back close that there price book Material. I'm going to just double check all my price track items are in there. Price track blocks, yep. And go to my spec. At my specs, missing some items. So go to library and say new build. Ah, right, okay. So got a new install here so I need to go do a bit of fixing so I'm going to go to my settings I go to my favorites I'm going to see if I can rebuild my spec by just selecting build a warehouse put price track as my secondary option click apply and see if that's rebuilt my specification There we go, it's rebuilt the specs. So, that sh there was basically I had items missing in the specification, possibly mostly because I've uh, removed one of my merchants, uh, True Point Direct. So, I had a hole in my specs, but by using them, my favourites, I was able to rebuild those specifications. So, I can go to my favourites again, and this time I'm going to go back to Price Tracker. I'm going to set build it as my secondary option. Basically, the secondary option here say number one on the order is if it can't find a material under this merchant it will look to this merchant next very moment messages popping up close that down there we go right so I'm gonna apply that again now 
updating specifications. Go to my specs again. Go to my extension specification, which is the one I wish to use. And make sure everything's there. Perfect. And I can close out of there. Close again. Go back. Go back to my estimates. And go back into my PVC training estimate. Now, the specification within this estimate is still going to be missing those items. So all I need to do now is go to library and select extension specification and it will bring in the new rebuilt specification. It will also give me an option now to say do you want to apply the new modified specification to your estimate? I'm going to say yes. So it's going to run through and it's going to apply that specification to that brick and block workbook and now I can see a price so I know everything's fixed. So I'm going to go into the main walls again now and I'm just going to run through this so I've highlighted the column, go to the dimensions wizard and just drop in say three walls nothing fancy so just add 2.4 high we're going to do a gable on this one of width of 3 height 2 yeah I do yeah. No, uh, actually we could put a window in there, we'll just say 2.2 for the time being. Leave the foundation depth as standard. Plastering a standard there. I'm going to copy that column so I've got two walls. Actually I'm going to set those lengths as three. So even though I've missed those items I can go back and adjust them. And I'm going to go add another column, single story, select. And just add in a final length of wall for all this to tie into. Okay, so that's the main walls of a little extension coming out of the side. I can even give a little note there in the comments so I know exactly where they are. I can then go to say add worksheet and this time I'm going to call these uh, let's say uh, do, 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 do. location extension there we go so now I'm going to go single story cavity walls again and select that now this time I'm going to do these walls as only one point say yeah just one meter high one meter high each and I'm going to do two walls coming out at three meters. Right, so I've got that three there. I don't need any gables. Move along to the next one. I'm going to do my keep my foundations at uh, nine there because never know they might decide that they don't like the uh, conservatory in 15 years time or the next house owner knock it down, put four walls on it. At least if the foundations are good, then it saves effort in the future. Plus you can charge for it. Now moving on from there. Once again, doing the footing details as I would for the conservatory. And you say I can plaster that low level in there as well. Click finish. I'm going to copy that column. And I'm actually going to copy that column a third time. I'm just going to do a conservatory that's 3 meters by 3 meters by 3 meters. But I do need an opening in the main wall for the uh, side for the entrance in. So I'm just going to drop in there say yes, two square meters that should do now please say in the uh, questions box if I'm going a little fast um, or if I'm rambling or you want clarification on anything um, you're prerogative to uh, pipe up and uh, ask questions I would be doing a bit of a Q&A session at the end but if there's something you want to see as I'm going through you know uh, start yelling at me I'm going to close out of here now. And just put that in the comment there. Right, moving on from those conservatory walls. I can say workbook now complete. Nicely rounded up to uh, about 8 grand there. Now I'm going to do a bit of a slab for this. Sports Lab extension. Ah, uh, do reinforced. 
Now for this, I'm going to do two columns. I'm going to do the say 2.7 for the side, coming out for 4.4 4, because I think it's five meter length for that little side extension. Uh, not going to power play finish that. Uh, leave the hours of excavator just to clear the ground down to level. And we're going to bring the deliveries down. Click finish. And I can say slab or side. So I can see what that section of slabs for. I can then go down to add column again, with reinforce slab, select and say 2.7 if I need to know tech tips or tech labels, then 2.7 again. Actually, that's going to be 2.4. Yeah, 2.4 yep. on that side. So I'd one there. Right, so even though I'm rushing, I'm trying to maintain some kind of decorum and making sense. So, uh, da -da -da -da, power flight finish. Nope. Uh, say area time for excavator to clear that down. That's one. It's smaller. Say no deliveries for plant on that. It's already covered in the other column. And uh, zero the day for the power float as well. Click finish. And of course, I make sure the day for the power float zeroed out on that one as well because you don't want to order that at all. So I'm going to close out of there now. Close out of there. Say workbook complete. So I've already got I've got some walls now, some slab. Excellent, that's all wonderful. Now what I can do is say I've got a couple of other features to add in if I wish, such as a say structural opening, lean to roof for the side section. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna jump straight to the windows and the conservatory. So I'm gonna go straight to the conservatory first. Now I've got a few options here. I've got a uh, Conservatory with gable, double Edwardian conservatory, Edwardian conservatory, and a lean to. Now, for this, I want to have, uh, like I say, up and over, so I'm going to go to an Edwardian conservatory. I'm going to say this, call this one, call it glass house location. There we go. Now, as you can see now, this is the first thing you'll see once you enter the new workbooks. You'll have a range of uh, basically pre-designed conservatories you can select from. Okay. Now you will have a filter box on the side here with little uh, buttons you can, well, little sliders you can adjust. So you can say, I want anything between the range of three meters and 3.5 in projection and I can say everything from 3, point f uh, three meters to uh, say 5 meters or so I'm going to fight that down to 3.5 in width if I apply these filters the list of available conservatories will uh, decrease and I can then select from this list an Edwardian conservatory so as you can see new style of menus with an estimator express but it gives us a nice visual indication of what conservatory we're selecting, the cost, projection, and width. I'm going to select that conservatory now, and then we're into more familiar territory with the dimensions wizard. So I can say the depth of conservatory is three meters, width of conservatory adjacent to the house wall is three meters. Okay. Now. On this here, I'm going to have this little conservatory. And I'll kind of, if you can see where my mouse is moving, if, it's, uh, if it is visible on your screen, basically up there is where that little side extension is. Uh, so we're having the conservatory offset to the house. Now, there is a few notes on here. Say this page has been automatically filled in base of the conservatory specified. You would need to edit these values to manage into conservatory specified. You need to price for the slab, flooring, and dwarf walls to relevant in the relevant workbooks. Now we've already done the slab and the walls. So, perfect. You know that note. Um, it's just a reminder in case you haven't done them, but we've already done them already. So, 
what you need to do now is set the width of the door, I'm going to actually set that as uh, 2 meters, lovely white door, and pitch of roof in degrees. So I've got 25 degree there, I'm going to put that up to say, 30. Let's try and match it in with the other roof. And click next, and you can select number of hours to in install conservatory and allowance for fixings and sealant. Now these are filled in for you already with uh, a conservative estimate of time to fix the well to install this kind of conservatory. Now these are posts that have been consulted with natural fitters, um, so they're not plucked out of the air. They actually are thought about. But if you do feel that you need to change them because you've got guys that work faster or slower, then you can do. We can see what kind of prices we're going to get with them once we hit the view resources. We can also say, do we re require gable stepping step flashings? Um, so once again, just to tie this into the, any existing walls, do you require cavity trays, horizontal flashing, and do you require cavity trays for horizontal flashing. So the, we're not doing any horizontal flashing because it's not a lean-to, but the questions will be applicable if we have. So, um, say I've got someone saying they've lost sound. Has anyone else got uh, issues with the sound? If so, well, I'll say. Right. Apologies, Paul. There. Um, you say, I've. You could jiggle your speaker cable. Check your volume. You're losing sound as well. Ah, right, okay. If you give me a moment, I shall see if there's anything I can resolve on this end. Give my headphone cable a wiggle. Is that better for anyone? No, just... Hmm. One if it's a connection issue. Right, so someone's saying it's dropping in and out and losing sound. But other people are fine. It's it it's man about two thirds are fine. So connection issues haven't got anything on my end. Everything seems to be the video's broadcasting fine and damn do I pay for fast internet. Right, ah, right, so okay, but everyone seems to go getting the green light again. Yes, um apologies for that. Uh it's just uh they go to the internet. Right, joy. No, right, moving on. So back to this. Horizontal flashing, not required for this because, like say, it's a pitched roof going into, tying into the wall. Then we can say, do you want to include a window board? Do you want to prime the window board? And do you want to decorate the window board? Yes. All you need to do now is click finish. And we've now got the price for conservatory. Now, extremely easy to price that up. All we need to do is select the conservatory, say what uh, kind of flashing we're going to need, and what kind of pitch, and we're pretty much done from there. Now, we can uh, check a couple of things. We can say go to the re resources output, and we can say check what lead flashing is going to be used. So we've got code 4 there, 3 meter rolls. And we can see who's doing what. So fixed gable abutments on roof, and then fixed gable abutment to abutment there to the brick layer. We can sundry materials, install conservatory, join a plus mate, £33 an hour. There we go. So £792 worth of labour for this conservatory to be fitted. Now, once again, nothing to stop you adding in a few extra resources if need be at this point. You may find that this might be an opportune moment to uh, add some extra materials in or some subcontract price for blinds. So, we can actually have a little go with that. Let's, uh, we can go to, say, let's add a, just a, a sundry cost for the moment. We're just going to do this as an example of doing this kind of task, and I guess sundry cost, item used for, window, blinds, uh, might not be something 
we can uh, pick ordinarily. The customer might have their own preference. It's already to price up for them. So, as you may see now, the edit resource box is ever so slightly different than before. New uh, calculator icons. Good ex uh, reason for this is that this is all being written in new code. It's, like it's all brand new and fresh out the oven. So I'm going to say uh, usage units. I can say Let's just say I'll just start typing each. There we go. There we go. Close to build phase. Much longer list than previous uh, build phase list, so it's much easier to filter through items. So let's just say we're going to put that under. Yeah, a bit of completion there to put on the blinds. One for one, there we go, that's fine. Click OK. And because it's the price of pound, we can say we want to allow, uh, say, £175 for fancy blinds to go in. There we go. Click back. Close. I'm going to just type including blinds. There we go. Close again. So we're now complete. We can say yes. So we've done a conservatory. Very straightforward task. And now that's done, we can move on to some of our windows. So I'm going to move on now to, let's say, uh, the windows down here. I'm going to say worksheet name. Let's call this uh, side window location extension. Click OK. So unlike the previous window uh, workbooks you may have used, where it already has some preset sizes already done for you, or the actual window one there that was pre previously blank where you added your own window in, this one once again comes up. It asks you for the worksheet name, then it once you're in, it'll ask you for the window you wish to use. Now this is bit like the conservatory one that we used just now but we have a few more extra options so what I'm going to do is I'm going to filter down this to say I want windows no bigger than 1.2 okay and the height actually no wider than 1.8 actually let's take it to 1.8 uh, height no bigger than 1.2 there let's say 1.3 bring it down a little bit there we go and U value, so I can say I want nothing below 1.4, it goes up to 1.5. I can now select colour from the menu, so I'm going to come down here, I'm going to say I want to select um, wood grain brilliant white. If I want still, I can select red, I have a joke, I've got full range of colours that the supplier can provide for you. So wood grain brilliant white, range, I can say casement, style and then I can select the style of window I wish to use. I'm going to currently select all styles and I click apply filters. So this is now giving me this whole range of windows still. So I'm going to come back down here and say on that under say style 25. There we go. Apply filters and it's vastly reduced the list of windows within that range. To make that even smaller, I'm just going to bring that slider across again, so just narrow in the range of windows to look at. There we go, so 1195 by 1765, 1888 by 1788. Now, a little word on the, the sizes there, that is including some of the sealed size there and they are provided in metric and imperial sizes. Now once you've got a cost of the window within the software you can finalize the actual windows themselves because you may not always have a standard size to work with with um, crystal themselves and they can manufacture it to your specifications. Once again, I've still got a range of colors I can select from down here. Let's select that window there 
Select that window. Now, onto the next section is the lintels. So I can now go through and select the lintel I wish to use. So to make this easier, I can say wall type. It's a cavity wall. And the cavity width, I can say this is 90 to 105 millimeter. I've got there 50 to 60 and also 120 to 140. I'm going to go to the 90 to 105. Apply those filters. And then all I need to do now is select a steel lintel that's big enough to do the job in hand. So I'm going to go 2100 there. That should give me 50mm on each end. And I just select the lintel. And finally, I can now select the cavity closer that will accompany this window as well. So I'm going to say 100, 105. There we go. Select that one. Finish. I do get the. Uh, pop up box there. Now I've selected an imperial size window so I've actually now got some imperial size measurements to go in if that was the case. So I'm going to leave them as is but I still have just like the traditional windows fixing details, DVC overruns and I have sill projection on each end, plastering to sill details and decoration specification. Click finish. Now as a point I can't add columns within this workbook. Because it's selecting a specific window, it's just going to go for that one window. As you'll have a uh, notification here saying only one column is allowed in this type of worksheet. To estimate items of different dimensions, use or create an additional worksheet. Because you might have two windows of the same type, we can still just go number of two. So if you've got two windows that are identical like that, then we can just say number of two and be done with it. That's all fine. But if you did have different size windows, then you just go to Add Worksheet and go through that process again of specifying the window you wish to use, the colour, style, lintel, cavity closer, and then any final uh, inputs on whether it's got any decoration to the sill, if it's plastered and such. Once that's done, you can close out of the workbook now complete and say yes to that. I'm also going to do a uh, set of, uh, say, French doors. We can see it's going in the side there as well. So we're going to go for this process and just going to go for the door now. So location extension again. Click OK. And once again, I can set between the widths. I'm going to say it's no bigger than a 1.8. The door for the conservatory is already included, I believe. I'm just going to have one on the side of that little extension, as it were, as it is there, so 1.4 minimum, colour, we're going brilliant white, specification, now I can say double doors, two side lights, double doors, side light left, or side light right, or double French door. I can say style, and I can then select from panel doors, sliding doors, and I even have some mic ones to show which ones I can go from here and opening direction in or out. I'm going to have them opening out, apply those filters, nothing of that style there, in, apply. So if it's not in their range, it'll have nothing there to apply. So clear those filters, what ones do I have? So I still have quite a wide range. So side up left opens in. Uh, nothing within the size range. Do, do, do. There we go. That do. Select that door. We're going brilliant white. Yep, that's available in that colour. Select that door. Have to see. 105. Apply filters. Needs to make sure it's big enough, so lintel, there we go, select lintel, cavity closer, and that door is now specified, and all I need to do is just make sure the dimensions are correct. So once again, if you have different dimensions to the window that's actually costed for here, you can ask for a custom size, you know, the, the price difference um, is going to be minimal for a few mil, they, will man they do manufacture them to spec so you can always be like say rest assured that you know your windows are going to fit you know, there's nothing worse than waiting for
few weeks for Windows to turn up in the wrong size. Um, you know, this you can order the correct size window, and they can be delivered uh, quite promptly, I do believe, and also free delivery, which is a winner anywhere in the country. Sound like an advert, but it's worth shouting about because it's you know for for quick jobs. It, it's going to save you time and fitting your own windows as well. This is something we've we've found with a lot of people is that of all the things builders do, they will tackle hard, complicated jobs, artisan jobs, th bespoke items, things that that you know million pound houses. When it comes to fitting windows, they shirk away from it. A lot of you guys do fit your windows, and that's excellent, you know, because a window isn't the hardest thing in the world to fit, nor is a door. But a lot of people do shirk away from it, and this, hopefully, you know, we, we can help you tackle that yourself, and you know, uh, hopefully save yourself some money. And if you are still pricing for that, uh, original price possibly, you know, then that is extra money in your pocket. Or if you've wanted to be more competitive, then you can then, you know, say bring your uh quote prices down because you're saving money yourself on Windows, but you're not personally losing out on your profit. Once again just go through the uh traditional uh are the sills plastered, are the reveals plastered, it's on a threshold board. Uh, so once we're through that initial stage, we're once again in very familiar territory for anyone that's, uh, the same they've done before. Ah, fencer registration. Uh, good question there, actually. Now, if you are doing, uh, say, an extension or new build that is going to be ha having a builder inspector, anything that builder inspector touches, you actually won't need that as far as my understanding is because that signing off will be done by the building inspector. The main thing for Fencer is if you are doing say renovations or you're just coming in to swap a window for some uh, uh, in a room uh, then you can uh, get Fencer registration do it first it's uh, not too much for Vic and Roll to do that it's something you can get self-authorized to do um, and then you can go ahead and fit your own windows and sign them off. Um, if you don't feel like you want to go for fence registration, but you do fit a window, then you can always try and grab someone from Builder Control and drag them out to go, look at this, I fitted it correctly. Isn't it a wonderful job? But for the most part, you know, if you're doing extensions, you know, that's where, mo where most people are getting new windows in. You know, if you're going to require a new window, it's going the extension, it's going to get a building inspector to take a look at that. If I'm wrong, please, please, someone point point out to me and shout at me. But that is as far as my understanding is currently. So, good question there, Paul. Thank you for bringing that one up. And hopefully, my uh, uh, homework paid off. Uh, ah, yes, people saying it's correct. Right. Do a victory dance afterwards. But um, yeah. Uh. Yeah, once again, thanks for bringing that question up because it, it's it's something worthwhile. And I think it's one of those things as well because it's for some people there's not always the clarification that do they need a fencer to fit windows altogether. Now, and I think it can put people off, but it is only under that circumstance when you're doing a renovation that's not going to be building control inspected. Right. So we'll, we'll complete. Yes. So that there, as you can see there, um, hopefully uh, I've gone through some of the main items there. You know, it's, uh, we've, it's now about 40 minutes. So I've done starting off an extension there saying the, uh, with the draw falls and the slabs in place. I can carry on um, with, uh, say, a lean-to roof uh, doing the structural opening. But hopefully I've imparted so how these new workbooks run. I um, can carry on running through a couple of extra ones now um, for you guys, so you can uh, see them in action still. But I'm going to open the uh, uh, floor up to questions. If if uh, 
If anyone has them there, I'm just going to take a quick, um, say, pause the audio for a moment so I can have a drink. And if you've got any questions, uh, fire them over my way. And while you're thinking, I'm just going to go back and uh, play with some doors. How exciting. <laughs> Light and lanterns. Good question. Now I'm going to cancel out of this one. Close that. Do I specify anything? Nope. Close. Right. They're complete. I do believe, as it stands at the moment, as far as it comes to roof lights and lanterns, the workbooks aren't in there just yet. Uh, do, 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 do. But they are going to be in now because I do know this because I've seen some of the stuff. Da, 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 da. Now the workbooks themselves might not be there. Oh, new coping workbooks, excellent. That works perfect with the uh, conservatories. But what I can do is if I go into uh, da, 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 material, there we go. Apologies if I keep making noises. It's my thinking mode. Uh, th thinking mode either sounds like me making noises or head banging against desk. Right. Uh, conservatories, conservatories, conserved by folds. Oh, click find. Is it for light? Right. Roof windows. Hipped roof light black PVCU with aqua glass, blue glass, neutral glass. So they are in there. So um you will have the ability to add roof windows in. Actually, am I being a No, but you say they can be added in as a composite or extra on top of workbook. So if you're doing a flat roof workbook and you've left an opening, you can then add in as a sundry cost the roof lights. Okay, um, say so probably going to be doing something a little bit more in depth on the roof lights uh, in a separate, like say, like mini training video. Um, so I can show how I'm going to be implementing them. Um, now, these items, see the items here will be cropping up in Plans Express as well. So you see how uh, I'll be showing how to do that as well when that does roll around. Um, so next question. Right. Do you have a product that I can import drawings into? Put my own labour costs and material costs for Travis Perkins, for example, rather than have to do each wall opening at Lintel. Well, that's basically the original uh, windows. Now, Mark, um, the original windows link to a standard price list that you, you can adjust uh, to Travis Perkins. Um, not to say when it comes to 
prices from Travis. Let me see. I haven't got Travis here. I don't have. Uh, no, I haven't got Keyline or Travis prices. So I can't sh look at that. But that would be what the um, price tracker stands in for. If because I don't think we've actually got. items from them so we would be looking at adding in or adjusting the prices of these to fit they are generic windows but these ones here the workbooks they are connected to are still the ones that are linked to plans express currently so if you have got a uh, drawing you put into plans express and you trace over it draw a wall drop a window into it that window is including you know it's going to go straight to that window as priced here so if the price is adjusted here it will be adjusted for the one you drop in also same in the workbook as well you can change the labor rates because it's going to point to a certain labor type which you can then adjust the labor prices in the price book and the labor so it does do what you're saying there it's just you'll have to change the price of the window in here and the price of the labor being used now everyone should be changing the prices of the labor that from what we specify now we give a generic price but the price of the windows, it's a case of if you know what you're paying for a certain window type, either from Travis or from another manufacturer, then you just, if you know what you're paying for a certain type, adjust that purchase cost in here, it'll give you an adjustment, and you can apply that adjustment for across the range to bring everything else in line. It's, gonna, it's a little bit too much to say to adjust all of them, but it could be a case that it goes to mass editing, edit prices. For that type of window there, I might be paying. 120 instead of 144. Edit prices. Keep tracking that, and I see there I've got an adjustment. I can go edit adjustments and apply that across all the window and door frames that HBIC self supply. You'll see there now new prices on this site. So you can bring things in line. We say um, it's it's one of the very special features about the f uh, fact we've uh, now linked up with Crystal Direct as a merchant supplier themselves because they do supply to merchants uh, traditionally. This is their first say set into providing to the wider market directly through us, and it means you do actually get kind of like actual prices for windows instead of the post merchant markup prices as well. Um, so got Paul and Andy both asking questions basically saying are the roof lights going to be in Plans Express and will Crystal Direct expect going to be into Plans Express at all? Yes and yes. I do believe uh, the roof lights um, if, if there's not symbols for them I will kick somebody till there are symbols because uh, many of you already know that I'm a roofer so I, I've, I've screamed for this and yes the Crystal Direct stuff is going into Plans Express. Um, I've been playing with versions of Plans Express so far that's got the drop down boxes ready for the materials to be linked up so it's just waiting for say finalization on um, the symbols and link ups to be done and then it's good to go that's coming very soon so you'll be able to directly draw within the Plans Express and then out you go with Estimator now what I'm going to do actually to kind of show you how it all works you see I'm going to go to a Summary again. And I've done some Crystal Direct stuff there now, so I'm going to close out of there. Say so estimate in progress, and I'm going to get a little prompt now saying your estimate specifies products from the PVCU partner Crystal Direct. Your PVCU requirements will now be sent to Crystal Direct. Click OK. You can say, right, just to confirm the uh, details for your quotation, telephone number, email, site postcode, order requirement, and I say within three months. Uh, no requirement currently, no requirement using the service just for estimating purposes. No. So they can contact you about any specifics and also when you want to order. The lead time is quite short uh, for the for the manufacturing and they've got a fleet of vehicles ranging from Arctics down to things like say sprinters and stuff like that. They can dart down to all the way down to like Land's End if need be with a window. So, 
that's how that works. I'm going to send in for the moment. But, um, yeah, so you will be able to run all the way from Plans Express through to actually ordering the window. Uh, more questions? That's it. I managed to make one of these webinars last two and a half hours with Plans Express before now because you lot kept asking questions. I challenge you. <laughs> so, while we're doing that, I'm going to go back into PUC training. Should I close that there, continue my settings. Have a little look in my workbooks. Click find for crystal. See what words we've got in here as well. So you can see a new conserve uh, workbook type for conservatories there as well. You'll see there as well. They are linked to spec. So items for the um, say. Pla uh, plaster reveals, you know, will refer to the plaster board of your choice. You know, from, from, from any other merchant you've already got specified as your preferred merchant. Same with the paints, fixings, whatnot. So from hereby refer to onwards to as gubbins. Okay, Mark, that's fine to say. Um, thank you for sticking around for the hour. Um, right. Your number there, I shall endeavour to pick that up on the report tomorrow morning and give you a bell. Okay. Thank you very much for attending. So, while I'm, I'm here, uh, on the new menu as well, I'm just going to give you guys a little briefing. So, Generally, on, in the my settings, it's a looks change, new look for the buttons and such. You know, just organise slightly differently to keep it in tune with newer versions of Windows. And you'll slowly see the software evolve over to be more, say, and what is it that Microsoft calls modern? But uh, you'll see some of the like legacy menu stuff appearing because I'm still using Office 2007. I'm just come too stingy to buy a new version. Plus, it's really good. Um, on the new main menu, just to run for this now, so you see you've got the new SMA Express icon, 2015, with a new naming scheme, so it just makes it easy to know what version you've got. But you also see there now, say, new icons for the installed features and bonus packs, so you see if something's not active, it's greyed out. So in this case, invoice generator bonus pack. If I was to want, if I wanted to turn that on, I can uh, do so on the laptop next to me. Because I can do that. There we go. So I'm going to turn that on, and I'll restart the software in a moment to bring that up. But one of the new features that we've got, which I personally love, is just these little traffic lights. You know, so people can uh, generally see, you know. Click on the software version, you are running the latest version of Estimate Express 2015. Lovely. Peace of mind. I've got all the new stuff, I've got all the current bits and bobs, I've got all the new workbooks. Support and updates. Click on that. Got a nice little gauge there now to say how many months I've got left. You can say you have 365 days left of your subscription. Mostly because I registered this version today because I installed it now, an hour and a half ago. Uh, but you can see it runs up to 24 months, so if you've just got a brand new uh, direct debit subscription in place, it runs all the way up to 24 there. But a nice visual indicator. And almost the PS resistance is the merchant accounts as well, which is beautiful. You know, we can now see what merchant accounts are active, how long are left on them. You know, so you, once it gets starts down to empty, you know, you're going to have to uh, like say, have a little think about do you uh, want to renew that particular merchant account? If it, you know, or you can using a new merchant now, or if you want to add something else in there as well. So, 
particularly one of the little... Th I should have highlighted this at the beginning because I particularly love this. <laughs> so, but that I'm geeking out over the software. I suppose it's my job. Right, so, invoice generator bonus back because it's greyed out. If I click on that, it will open up in your preferred browser a link to the uh, web shop so you can see what's involved with that particular bonus pack and if you want to add it to your software as well. Now I'm going to close down the software and I'm going to start it back up again with the new Estimator Express 2015 icon. There we go. And I've turned it on so Invoice Generator Bonus Pack is now active. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pop into PVC Training. So I've got those items there active now. Bef and I'm going to go to Reports. Um, Paul, um, generally we're always trying to talk to uh, anyone. Now, um, they're always welcome to contact us and I've clicked Recalc and I've got Recalc every workbook active, haven't I? Yes, I have. Bang. Yeah. <laughs> Whoops. Um, I've got an option tick to recalc all the workbooks because I installed my software, well, like I said, an hour and a half ago and I did a recalc to open up all the workbooks so they're all uh, active. But so I'm in here now to show a bit of stage payments. Um, yes, we're always um, trying to say be as welcoming as possible to any merchant that wishes to speak to us. Um, say uh, we are say I'm personally uh, not involved in the process myself, but um, if a merchant wants to contact us and say um, if they call and we can like provide push them up to um, say uh, the directors then that whole meeting process of what they want in the software prices you know basically organize a process to include it the legal side of things as well um, it's it's a weird game from my perspective because when I was uh, roofing myself, I know that I can go into one merchant, then I can all, uh, pay for the materials and go pick up from another because they're the same company effectively. Um, so, say when we got, um, say, uh, Travis Perkins, we got Keyline. With Juicens, we got Graham's as well. Uh, when we've got uh, Tradepoint, we got Screwfix and Plumfix. It's generally all the same umbrellas for each of them. There are other ones out there we want to look at, but currently, um, and some have wanted to speak to us and have done but it's uh, say other commitments and other such things you know, we need to speak to other branches of the tree and such but um, the process itself I think that's something you'd want to give us a call and we can forward you through to possibly Joanna Morgrew uh, who would uh, say or Adrian so to discuss further on that um Simon, um do you get the estimate updates the latest version? My screen says the older is the older version, but it says myself is up to date. Um well this, the home screen you should be getting should look well uh like that. Um for the version nine you'll say what version it is down there, um, you should automatically pop up saying there's a new version available for you um, to basically say would you like to download it. If it doesn't let you do that you can visit our web page directly. Um, if I drag that one across, so if you go to um, say hbxl.co.uk 
you can go down to the little support section down here and go to um, say updates and upgrades estimator express there and hit download now drop in your builder ID and password um, we can then say what well, then download the latest update if you're having difficulties with that saying it's like you um, say it's not that you download it like your browser's blocking it or if you just want a reminder what your builder ID is then let us know um, actually on that little note there if I go to my estimates in 2007 to find your builder ID you just click on the little uh, option up there okay go to about estimate to express and it'll tell you what your builder ID is just there if you've got a newer version of Office, say 2010 or 2013, there will be a button at the top here next to where it says Estimate Express Toolkit on the ribbon. Click on that there and you'll find another button called uh, About Estimate Express or you can also click Check for Updates. Um, if it's not letting do any of that, then that's prime time to uh, give us a bell on support and we can see have a little look see I'm actually being really cheeky now I've got my laptop next to me from work and I'm actually trying to see make sure you've got version down ah right well, yeah it says you run at 8.6 so you have got an update available for you so okay but yeah um, if you if it's still if it's being tricky just let just drop us an email on support and we'll uh say send out the irrelevant information to direct download link if need be tomorrow morning da, da, da. Right, uh, well, I'm going to go back into that PPC training one I'm going to have a little um, poke at uh, let's see what should I have a go with Concrete, yeah, let's go concrete sloping. So, 300 millimeter wide wall. Actually, go in there. But if any of you guys have uh, seen the new coping stone workbooks, but like say these ones, these basically are included. Uh, Say I'm just supporting updates for any updates you get. You don't have to pay for any of these. These are just given to you. Ooh, right question. Right. Right. An old style desktop icon. Normally the icon should be updated to the new one. If it's still giving you the old style, mm, permissions issue under Windows. Uh, is it opening up and giving you uh, the new actual new splash screen and new front menu? Um, it just sounds like the icon just hasn't updated. Uh, could force it to do that. Um, doesn't sound like it's a game breaker. Uh, possibly, if running the update as admin would let if would let it change the icon. But if it's not broken in the software, then you could leave as is. If you really want the new icon, then can call in and I can force it to look at the new icon. It's a lovely new icon. But sometimes actually when you've got something like that and it's not letting it update a certain specific little thing, it can be worthwhile still uh, giving us a bell, just have a little look, because it's that adage of it's systematic. Sometimes it's, it's the little thing that goes wrong first and then something larger might go go wrong later on along the lines. So if it's a permissions thing then it might be something we can nip in the bud by setting the software to run as admin permanently. Just off the top of my head without uh, looking at it. That's my uh, best impression of a Mystic Meg I can give you right now. Right, uh, do we have some more questions? Doug, uh, next.
Mystic Meg impression. Do you have Office 2013? Three six five. Yeah, that's the online version of uh, 2013. There's a few things. Basically, it, it's it's almost a robotic process for us. Um, with say the new version 2013 365. Uh, uh, thanks for attending, Graham. E it's a, when back Office 2010 was released uh, for the first two years, within three four weeks of installing, it needed a repair. Now it seems to be fairly standard. If it, it's 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 pretty good now. You know, it doesn't need any any touching. My work machine runs Office 2010. Uh, with 2013, we'll say two and a half years into its well two years into its launch and it's still requiring repair within four weeks of installation um, some versions require a quick repair every couple of months horrifically some people need a full repair every now, uh, more often than that but it's the um, so it's not the best ver version of office has been but the main slowdown thing with that which makes it slower than previous versions so if you see how my 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 software uh, runs here. Like say, the transition of pages. It's because it's all running within one copy of Excel. With the new 2013 365, every time you go to a new page, it has to open up a new copy of Excel. Um, minor things can affect the speed of them opening. Uh, default printer. If your printer, say, if you go to say, devices and printers, if the default printer is the uh, say a HP printer or HP wireless that can cause a lot of slowdown it's due to the drivers talking the HP drivers like to back up everything that Excel talks about just in case you want to print it at a moment's notice um, so you can set your default printer to Microsoft XPS so if right click set as default that can speed things up a little bit uh, what else? so repair that um, you can make sure that there are no add-ons running, so you can go to uh, say if I was to minimize that. At this point, I see how many games I've got installed on this machine. So, under Excel on its own, say uh, Excel options lives there on 2007, but say just on the menu. On 2010-2013, go to add-ins and make sure that there are no other comma add-ins active. Now, comma add-ins um, generally you find them for like, say our software, like uh, like say Abby Fine Reader there, but also things like Sage active as well. Sage add-ins tend to stay active even when Sage isn't turned on, so it can conflict. So if you turn them off when it's not running. Uh, generally they will stay off and only turn on when you activate Sage but that um, can, can cause slowdown and unpleasantness if you are having issues printing off well actually no, it's, it's, say add-ins in Word as well can, when you're doing a print off if it slows down it can be an add-in in Word like a Acer Cloud add-in can cause uh, issues because it's trying to save documents before they're actually produced um, yeah, it's the only other thing I found, uh, specifically with say mainly um, to, uh, say 2013 and 365, is that if you have an antivirus scanner that's doing a live scan constantly, it will scan the say if when you cr when you um, uh, create an estimate, it creates say lo lots and lots of uh, say the, the spreadsheets within the software, you know, within the background. And every time you open and close one of these, the virus scanner can basically just tries to scan it each time, and it'd be holding up the saving and closing of the file while it does its scanning, so that can cause a slowdown. Really little annoying things like that, and it, actually that one was the only one I, I picked up on by chance because I had something else that's being slowed down by constant virus scans. Um, but I think that generally. Caffey and Norton are the worst for those ones because their live scanner is overzealous and annoying. But um, yeah, I think that is say 
But if it's not some if it's not something you feel that you want to say have a look at or tackle yourself, once again, you know, call support. Um, it might be something we can spot quickly and try and like say add a bit of improvement to speed wise. Um, or give suggestions to to improve things there as well. Another one is if people run back uh, their lap they've got a laptop and it's running in power saving mode, it underclocks the processor. Um, so it things happen slower, which can hi be highlighted when you're working on estimator, which is doing a lot of calcs. No, I'm talk I can talk a little bit gobbledygook there, but it is something we can point out. Yeah, you say um, I can give you ideas there, Doug, and you know, su supports there to uh, ah. David, I, um, you are muted. Uh, Jeremy, it's the default for webinars. It's to uh, stop 50 people yelling at me at once. Um, I can unmute people, but it ends up, like I say, unmute the room, but it ends up as this crazy cacophony. Yeah. So yeah, so that David, but say feel free to just type in, type anything at me there. Um, ID for password. Well, if I go back to estimator, in 2007, you have the office button there. You know, Microsoft finally got uh, the idea and actually called it the file button. But if you click on that there or file, uh, for say for 2007, you'll see about estimator express on the menu. And in there, it'll say build ID. Your password is something you'll have to remember yourself. But if you have completely forgotten it, you can ask support, and we can send that to you. If you've got 2010 or 2013, you'll see that there'll be a button just here above where it says, like, say, delete workbook recalc, next to where it says estimator express toolkit on the ribbon. See, see that there. But if you click on that. It will give you the same options as here, say options, check for updates, and about Estimator Express, and you'll once again be able to see this here, and it'll tell you what your CD key is and your builder ID. Particularly useful to check if you are considering moving your software to another machine, because you might want to, if you've got several licenses, you might want to make sure you uh, deactivate the correct one uh, instead of things going horribly wrong. Same and don't say sorry for being a pain. Um, um, it's my job to answer these questions. Uh, what guarantee they have on their goods? Uh, let's check that one. I do know it's uh, on the actual manufacturing goods themselves is quite good. <laughs> oh, apologies, I found myself mumbling. Um yeah I've uh, got a cheat sheet here somewhere. I do know it's quite a good guarantee for the actual uh, window itself. Oh, I feel really bad now, I can't find the answer.
I think that one will be a question I shall email you tomorrow about um, when I've got my sheet in front of me. I feel terribly awful for not being able to answer that one straight away. Wait. Um, I did mention at the beginning about uh, say, um, say sorry everyone for switching <laughs> switching here. Um, there's got another question for me. Um, say by Andy, I will uh, get back to you tomorrow when I've actually got a full answer for you there. Okay, sorry about that, but I'll say I'll, I'll make sure I get an answer for you. Um, but best assured, it's a good guarantee. Just can't find it in front of me. Um, Doug, yes. Uh, enhanced rates of extensions of refurbishments. Do I know what the percentage is applied? It's not so much of a percentage applied. It's more of a um, uh, just an account kind of thing. Cause there's not. It's not so. Uh, I think the best thing I could do is show you actually. If I go to my settings, my uh, specifications. Uh, so let's go to extension spec. Uh, let's go to mini specs. Let's go for mini spec. Let's say roof tiling, and then let's go to that pan tile for new build. Okay. Um, so if I come down here, because there's only going to be a uh, felt fixed felt tile uh, le nah, tiles felt lathe, and I can see here the usage factor. So you can see where they're the actual difference is applied. So like I said, it's one hour to do 4.34. If I go Pantel to extension and renovation, four. So just so it's only a small percentage applied per hour per square meter. So um, yeah, per hour, but it's just enough to kind of account for. Uh, just that little extra difficulty. Uh, if I look at that for bricks, say new build, say 0 0.5, uh, it's a bit more obvious on these ones. So two brick layers in a make, it takes one hour to do two meters of brickwork square, okay? Straightforward. If I was to go that there and go 40p extension renovation, you'll see now it takes uh, one hour to do 1.666 square meter. Jim, so and that's that time lag there, even though it's still new new bricks, you know, I haven't clean anything off, you know, it's going to be more awkward getting them around, loading them up. I can, if I then pop along to say reclaimed brick. So it's gone down to say 0.55, so 1.8, so 1.818 so 1 there. So it's still quicker than extension renovation, but it's slower than a new brick, new build. And if I go down to so something like almost a. Uh, Five percent, say you say round up, so five percent increase in time. Let's let's say. Yeah, so I think yeah, comp five percent compound. <laughs> Is that kind of what you was expecting for difficulty? So been added to uh, the uh, say time it takes. Say well, so while I'm here as well, right, if if you feel that say you want something a bit different, you can actually you can adjust these in here. You, know, you can click the calculator, change the rates, and they'll be saved to what you feel is your preferred time for those uh, items.
like I say, yeah, so um, if you find, like I say, it might be higher, then, like I say, they work faster, then, no, go for it, change, change the, uh, time it takes to lay, lay those items, you know, now, we say, I am currently looking at for that 1.5 meter square in one hour, I am looking at a reclaimed brick for a renovation, so, that's taking in mind that these bricks may need cleaning up, tidying up, and all sorts of things that are done to them. But if you, uh, so it could be something that you might edit uh, within the task itself, or if you find that you've got a really good supplier of reclaimed bricks, you can just uh, change that there. Now, what I can do is I can, while I'm here, I'm going to grab one of these uh, one pound reclaimed bricks, highlight that one there, and I'm going to copy existing. So say one pound reclaimed brick. For, uh, One pound reclaimed, uh, let's say, imperial brick for renovation. There we go. Click OK. One pound in, uh, claimed imperial brick. And I'm going to change that there. I could change this there to 52, or I can use the calculator. Bit lazy way in this one, to saying that it's 52. And they're actually laid at 1.7 meters square an hour. So I say 1.7, and that's a new one added in there now. To make sure I select the correct face of brick, it's actually pointing at one pound reclaimed, reclaimed brick anyway. So I don't really need to change the resource being used in this case. But if I wanted to change the resource that it's pointing at, I could just click on change resource and it bring up the section of the brick section of the price book for me to uh pick something out from here. So I could pick out something that's possibly uh a branded one if need be. Brick Company, one I've done before. There we go. It's a company just down the road from me. So I click OK, and that spec's done now. I can actually, uh, if I was to go into the estimate I've just done, I could probably apply that. So go to spec, mini spec, change mini spec, bottom there, claimed imperial. I'm not going to apply that because I'm not going to make the same mistake twice. Go to estimate express options. Estimates and untick recalc all workbooks, including ones not previously opened. It's terrible ones to leave ticked. <laughs> da -da -da -da. Click OK. Then apply spec. There you go. Added a grand onto that brick and block wall. Um, say, guys, please uh, fire questions my way if there's anything you, see you want particularly want to see, because otherwise I will have a tendency just to babble on and go all over the place. So. So I'm just going to pause the audio a second while I uh, have a sip of my drink. Uh, less of a simp, sip. Uh, more of a glug of half a pint of apple juice. Oh, hi there, Mark. <laughs> Got a question for me there, Mark? We're just saying hello. <laughs> The 
notice it closed at the top. You should uh, say if you if you're logging in via a web browser, just close the web browser. If it's opened up in a separate window, you should be just to close it down. Uh, if you had any demos with the sales team, maybe the same principle as what they done there. That's right there, Mark. Um, can we look forward to some more of Tom's quickies on the new spec? Yes. <laughs> um, it's in the urgent column of things for me to do uh, some videos to basically produce for these new items basically the new crystal direct stuff uh, there, there is going to be uh, some Tom's quickies produced for that and also when the plans express stuff is available there's going to be some for that as well there should be some videos up already for the um, mini specifications So you should find it under uh, there. You go number one currently at the top of the list. The uh, mini specifications as well. So for that lot there, and like I say coming soon to a cinema near you is the Crystal Direct items as well. Say, uh, come it's like say half eight now. So, if no more questions, I'll uh, wrap this up soon and uh, go make myself something to eat. But, um, like I say, so last chance to get some questions in there now. Uh, in the meantime, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, say find out. Well, basically, get a log of all this. So, any questions that I couldn't answer during this session I will be able to uh, say uh, email or give you a call tomorrow with you know, answers for you specifically say like the uh, guarantee on crystal direct items there as well Cheat sheets currently only got the manufacturing capability, so I'm like eight. Uh, currently producing a thousand window, well, a thousand frames a week. Can do another eighteen hundred on top of that if needed. Um, right, so. Okay, well, so uh, we were saying goodbye there now, so I'm going to call it there. Now, thanks guys for coming along. Uh, sorry if I uh, rambled at any point. Um, I try not to, but sometimes it's inevitable. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, please, uh, say, give us a call with any questions if you think of anything after this, and please give this uh, the Crystal Direct stuff. Go, it's it's absolutely brilliant. You know the 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 selection of windows that's available now, the new tools to select the windows themselves, so you can get a good quote order through from Crystal themselves, and they can uh, say deliver straight to site, no minimum order, and they got a very quick lead time as well on that. So it's a case of uh, why not? I shall uh, bid you goodbye and uh, thank you for attending. <laughs>